Brazilian steakhouses are popular around the world for their all-you-can-eat meats and rodizio-style dining. If you're a meat lover, a Brazilian steakhouse is a dream. But there's a lot you might not know about the tradition they came from. This is the untold truth of Brazilian steakhouses. The Portuguese word churrasco means barbecue in English and can be used to refer to all kinds of grilled meats. More often, however, churrasco refers to a specific method of Brazilian grilling in which beef is barbecued on a long skewer and served by cutting off individual slices. Brazilian steakhouses use this technique to cook and serve a variety of different meats, from sirloin cap known as picana to a type of pork loin called Lumbo. But for Brazilians, churrasco is much more than just a cooking method. Churrasco, like much regional cuisine, defines a culture and a way of life. Brazilians celebrate their homemade barbecue no matter if they're throwing a party or just relaxing with friends and family. Though you may not be able to travel to Brazil to experience the churrasco way of life, traditional Brazilian steakhouses can give you a taste. Most Brazilian steakhouses serve food using a unique method that lies somewhere between buffet and family-style dining. Rodizio, which translates to rotation, requires diners to pay a fixed price for a variety of all-you-can-eat options. Most steakhouses have a salad bar, but the main course is paraded out of the kitchen on large skewers, which serve as sliced directly onto diners' plates. According to legend, Rodizio dining started when a waiter at a restaurant called Churrascaria Matias in the state of Rio Grande do Sul mistakenly brought a meat skewer to a table that didn't order it. Instead of immediately correcting his mistake, the waiter allowed the diner to try the dish anyway, and so a great tradition was born. Rodizio gained popularity in the mid-20th century when restaurants began feeding truck drivers. Truck driving as a profession became more common along with the rise of more road construction in Brazil. Because of Brazil's many cattle herds, meat was cheap to buy, and because of the simple churrasco tradition, it was also easy to make. Hungry travelers were eager to get their hands on it when they stopped to rest and refuel. Picana is the best and most traditional meat available at a Brazilian steakhouse. No true Brazilian barbecue is complete without it. This particular cut of meat is a necessary ingredient if you're looking for a real Brazilian experience. Similar to a sirloin in flavor and texture, picana is taken from the backside of the cow in the fatty area above the butt. Most U.S. butchers break down this piece of meat into smaller cuts, thus losing the fat cap that gives picana much of its flavor in the process. It's the fat cap that infuses picana with a juicy tenderness unrivaled by other cuts of beef. Surprisingly, despite its extraordinary taste, picana is actually pretty inexpensive. However, it can be hard to find at a grocery store, but your local butcher should have it. As far as how you enjoy this delicious cut of meat, take it from Chef Antonio from Fogo de Chao. One thing also to remember, if you don't want to be yelled by a Brazilian, make sure you eat the fat with the picanha. Though the meat on a Brazilian steakhouse menu might not be familiar to outsiders, locals know these dishes well. From picana to fraldinha, Brazilian meats, especially churrasco style, are some of the best you'll ever have. Some of the most common cuts you'll encounter at a Brazilian steakhouse are picana, filet mignon, chuleta, and fraldinha. Picana is the most traditional cut, taken from the top of a cow's rump and seasoned with salt. It gets skewered into a C-shape when it cooks over open flames. Though filet mignon is a well-known cut of beef, sometimes you'll find it dressed up in bacon or a parmesan crust. Chuleta is whole cuts of ribeye steak that gets skewered and roasted, and fraldinha is a cut of bottom sirloin that's marbled with fat and served in long, flat pieces. If you consider yourself a big carnivore, a Brazilian steakhouse is the place for you. The Brazilian steakhouse experience centers around, well, steak and lots of it. The popular chain, Fogo de Chao, has been called a meat eater's mecca because it offers all the meat you can eat. And in that sense, it's not unique among Brazilian steakhouses. However, when Dottie Griffith reviewed a Brazilian steakhouse back in 1997, she noted, Americans and Texans are used to all-you-can-eat salad bars, but all-you-can-eat grilled steak and other meats was new at the time. Not for the faint of heart, or vegetarians, a typical Brazilian steakhouse will leave you feeling stuffed to the brim. Sure, you can't eat another bite. Until, of course, a server comes by the table with a new skewer of delicious grilled meat. With so many options to choose from, if you leave the restaurant walking upright, you're doing it wrong. Though you might assume that America's huge portion sizes have prepared you for this moment, Brazilian steakhouses take it to a whole new level. Brace yourself, and more importantly, pace yourself. 
Churrasco style grilling was created to show off the pure essence of the meat. Most of the time, churrasco meats are seasoned only with salt before being put on the grill. The skewers are stacked on top of one another with the fattier cuts on top, so the juices drip down and infuse the other meats with flavor. Brazilian barbecue lacks the smoky flavor popular in Texas and the US more broadly because Brazilian gauchos wanted to preserve the basic flavor of their farm-raised beef. Instead of smoking the meat, which alters the taste, they roasted it slowly on skewers until the outer layer was nicely seared and the inside was tender and juicy. Though beef is the most common kind of churrasco meat, Brazilian steakhouses often serve poultry and lamb as well. Unlike beef, these meats usually get a long marinade in a rich sauce before grilled, giving them an extra boost of flavor. Brazilian cowboys, or gauchos, were the first to cook meat Brazilian steakhouse style in the 1800s. The men would spend their days herding cattle and their nights grilling the meat over a fire for their friends and family. They prepared the food the same way it's done now – simply sprinkle on some salt and slow roast over hot coals. Back in the beginning of Churrasco, gauchos dug pits in the ground to build their fires and waited until it was extremely hot before skewering the meat and starting the roasting process. In those days, the men oversaw the meat, from pasture to butcher to spit, while the women gathered the food they had grown in gardens and prepared side dishes. The meal was a family effort and a celebration. The gauchos and their families gathered around the fire together, similar to the way you might gather with family and friends around the table to enjoy the same Brazilian meats. What are the best things to eat at a Brazilian steakhouse? We consulted with a chef and some notable experts in the Brazilian steakhouse dining world and got their advice on the best ways to spend your calories. Here's what to eat and what not to eat at a Brazilian steakhouse. Jean Delgado, the executive chef at Toro Toro in Miami, said, When anyone thinks of a Brazilian steakhouse, the first thing they think of is picanha. If you're not overly familiar with picanha, it's the crescent-shaped cut with the fat cap that's become the iconic image of Rodigio and the quintessential cut to get when you go. According to Steak School, the cut is taken from the cow's backside, also called the rump cap, rump cover, sirloin cap, or occasionally culotte. But the Brazilian steakhouse preparation, with a hint of salt, is called picanha. Picanha. Chef Delgado told Mash that picanha is best served medium rare to medium to ensure that the fat and juices are all captured in the meat. He added that it's especially important to make sure that the picanha is sliced correctly as well. It should be cut against the grain to ensure the proper texture. The parade of side dishes that come out when you flip your card to green at a Brazilian steakhouse are a carb lover's dream. The waiter gracefully arrives bearing french fries, rice, mashed potatoes, yucca flour, fried polenta, beans, fried bananas, and broccoli and carrots. So you can pretend you're having a balanced, healthy meal. Fly and Dine appropriately calls them, quote, a distraction, and suggests limiting your sides consumption to about 20% of your total intake. The sides are much cheaper, yet still more filling than the steaks circling your table and therefore a far less efficient use of your money and appetite. The other quintessential Brazilian steakhouse menu item isn't even steak, according to Jean Delgado. It's seafood wrapped in pork. The traditional skewers of bacon-wrapped scallops start with fresh sea scallops, are then wrapped with thick slices of cured bacon, and are roasted in the radigio until the bacon is delightfully crispy. The smoke flavor from the cured meat in the grill, along with the bacon fat, seeps into the savory scallops, creating a unique flavor that's hard to find elsewhere. Chef Delgado says, People love this classic dish. The mom and pops want to go back just for the bacon-wrapped scallops. They're not the only seafood item that's worth checking out at a Brazilian steakhouse, though. James Hills, author of the food and travel blog Man Tripping, wrote an extensive guide to Brazilian steakhouses. He told Mash that if you see a salmon or lobster in the Rodigio, to give it a shot. Advising against ribeye is not to say that Brazilian steakhouses use lesser quality cuts of meat than their American counterparts. In fact, in an interview with Fly and Dine, Enrique Opel Huya, head gaucho at Fogo de Chão in Los Angeles, revealed that the chain uses only 100% black Angus beef and that Fogo is highly selective about the cuts they pick. He said, you need naturally tender beef. And ribeye, especially higher quality ribeye, still scores well in the tenderness department and is far higher in fat and flavor than filet mignon, according to Rob Report. But at the end of the day, it's still an American cut and ultimately something you'll find in abundance elsewhere. 
As you settle in for your festival of meat at a Brazilian steakhouse, you may see your servers gliding around holding long metal skewers of sausage. Many times, this will be Brazilian chorizo, a cured meat sausage that's especially tasty out of the Rodigio. According to HuffPost, the Brazilian version is very similar to the original Spanish chorizo, which includes sweet and hot varieties of pork mixed with paprika. Jean Delgado, executive chef at Toro Toro in Miami, said, If there's one item I love at a Brazilian steakhouse, it's chorizo. I think it's because they rotate it in with their steaks. It's just a great quality. In addition to the chorizo, Delgado also recommends trying the Brazilian brisket sausages if they're being offered. He told Mash that the finely ground brisket is mixed with paprika and garlic that don't overpower the meat. And when it's smoked, it creates a flavor profile unique to this sausage. Filet mignon is often held up as the ultimate cut of steak, a tender, expensive variety that's used interchangeably with caviar and champagne in Lux Life Hyperbole. According to the Rob Report, this is mostly because the muscle that it comes from, the tenderloin in the lower back, is especially tender because it isn't used much. Katie Flannery, butcher and COO at Flannery Beef, told Rob Report, They're not doing gymnastics, so filet muscles get almost zero use during the animal's lifetime. That's why it's so tender. Fly and Dine points out that while the which are low in fat, are great as 6-ounce or 8-ounce cuts, little pieces of it wrapped in bacon really won't do much for you. When beef ribs come out at a Brazilian steakhouse, it's a little reminiscent of Fred Flintstone getting a slab of brontosaurus meat that's so big it topples his car. Would you like to try for a case of amnesia, Jumbo? You wouldn't dare. <laughs> James Hills described the visual of beef ribs brought to the table as a sight that's just as impressive to the eyes as it is to the stomach. He told Mashed, Pork ribs, they're nice, but it's mostly bone. Beef ribs coming out on a plate? It's just this giant hunk of meat that's big and juicy and fatty. It's a cool experience. The flavor, Hill said, is equally monumental, with perfectly caramelized edges on the meat giving the ribs a hint of sweetness. Yes, if you're watching your cholesterol, a chicken breast is often the wiser choice than a big hunk of fatty steak. But if you're watching your cholesterol, why did you just drop $75 on an all-you-can-eat steak dinner? Opting for the healthier option went out the window the minute you booked a table at a Brazilian steakhouse. And though the chicken may well be tasty and finely prepared, Man Tripping's James Hill says it's kind of a waste. He revealed to Mashed, I'm reluctant to say in general because everyone is a little different, but if you look at the selections that are out, some are not as prime as others. Others, so I never get chicken. Chicken is not what I'm going to spend my appetite budget on. If there's one universal piece of advice about eating at a Brazilian steakhouse, it's not to fill up at the salad bar. In Zagat's video guide explaining everything people do wrong at a Brazilian steakhouse, before even discussing the steak, Churrascaria Plataforma, meat carver Sandro Lorenzi, tells everyone not to do it at the buffet. He said of his New York restaurant, A common mistake people make here is going crazy at the salad bar. They don't save room for the meat. James Hills agreed when talking to Mashed, with a caveat that vegetarians, or those not looking to gorge, can save some money by dining solely at what Brazilian steakhouses refer to as the market or harvest table. But if you're spending $60 a person to enjoy steak, don't get your fill at the salad bar. Hills advised, have a little of that stuff, olives or charcuterie, to cut the fat from the steaks, but don't fill up on salad if you're there for a steak. Though beef tends to be the star attraction at a Brazilian steakhouse, it's far from the only thing on the menu. And in addition to stuffing yourself with enough beef to feed an entire preschool class, part of the idea in going is also to try some stuff that's unique to Brazilian cuisine. In its guide to eating at Brazilian steakhouses, Fly and Dine suggests branching out from the stuff you know and delving into some other specialties. Among these is the traditional Brazilian pork loin known as lombo. Fly and Dine describes it as a parmesan-crusted cut, promising, you'll be rewarded for your adventure. Grill Hall, a churrascaria in Maple Grove, Minnesota, delves a little deeper into lombo, saying, It's a traditional slow-roasted style of pork that is usually seasoned sparingly with salt, garlic, and some other herbs. It's not exclusively served with a parmesan crust. Sometimes it's covered with other cheeses, or sometimes none at all, but parmesan is the most common. 
If you manage to heed our earlier advice and don't immediately spoil your appetite at the salad bar, you may be tempted to pile your plate with the first meats that show up at your table. But while satisfying, this may not be the best idea. In its guide to eating at Brazilian steakhouses, Groupon stresses some patience after you flip your card to green. Steakhouses, the online coupon site says, often save the more expensive and tastier cuts of meat for last. So the juicy picanha and prime rib won't show up until after the flank steak and chicken. If you can hold off a little bit, you'll get the better stuff. The abundance of side dishes at a Brazilian steakhouse can make you feel conflicted. You're spending a lot of money to enjoy the beef, so using valuable stomach space on sides might seem like a waste. At the same time, you also want to try some classic Brazilian dishes that don't come on a stick. James Hills told Mashed that even if you're there for meat, it's worth trying a side or two. And if you've got to try one, he says it's for Ofa. He shared, Personally, I don't love it, but it's a fun way to explore another culture. Farofa, according to Rio and Learn, is a toasted yucca flour that's prepared all kinds of ways. It's typically served as a side with meat, rice or beans, but you may see it served by itself too. Additionally, another common preparation is feijoada, a stew made up of sausage, bacon and vegetables. Brazilian steakhouse chain Fogo de Chao offers it as part of its menu, and though feijoada will fill you up more, it's also quite the culinary adventure. While most Brazilian steakhouses will have a pretty solid wine list, Man Tripping suggests instead pairing your meat with something more unique to the cuisine. Its guide to Brazilian steakhouses points to the caipirinha, a traditional cocktail made of cachaça, sugar, and lime, as a refreshing, zesty drink that contrasts with the salty, greasy flavors of the steak perfectly. If you're not trying to include alcohol in your meal, you're not limited to tap water and fountain sodas either. Man Tripping suggests trying Guarana Soda, a Brazilian specialty with a fruity flavor that uses the guarana fruit to keep you out of a meat-induced food coma. Another non-alcoholic option, agua fresca. This is a simple mixture of blended fruit with water and sugar. It's definitely on the sweet side, but this category of beverage gives you lots of booze-free ways to complement your meal. In a traditional steakhouse, drowning your prime filet in steak sauce is a big-time no-no. It might even earn you a not-so-subtle sneer from your waiter if you try, and will definitely infuriate the chef. I'm extremely disappointed in you. This is a joke to you. But this is not the case at a Brazilian steakhouse. Not because the meat is of inferior quality, but because, according to chef Jean Delgado, it's not very seasoned. He told Mashed, You don't see much seasoning, so it's kind of bland. This, however, is easily offset by the abundance of sauces most Brazilian steakhouses offer on the side. Typically, these will include yucca flour and a vinaigrette sauce called a Moyo a Campanha that's a little like a pico de gallo, with red and green peppers instead of tomatoes. According to Insider, the acidic side is meant to cut the fat and complement the meat in the main course, and you're welcome to cover your meat and as little or as much of it as you want. Meat carver Sandro Lorenzi told Zagat, There is no wrong way to do the toppings. Just do as you like it. Waiters bringing skewered meat to your table? Cuts of beef you've never heard of? Why should you visit the salad bar? Keep watching for the truth about Brazilian steakhouse Fogo de Chao. The first Fogo de Chao in the world was started in 1979 in Porto Alegre in southern Brazil. This was almost 20 years before the company's expansion into the U.S., but it was a vital time for the restaurant to define itself and its reputation. Perhaps its biggest success was the fact that Fogo de Chao wanted to keep centuries-old culinary traditions alive, traditions specific to this particular region of Brazil. At the same time, the company focused heavily on top-notch customer service and excellent quality in the food and the dining experience alike. Perhaps most importantly, the restaurant wanted to celebrate and stay connected to the local culture. Fogo de Chao may not have been the first chain of Brazilian steakhouse restaurants in the United States, but it was largely responsible for the popularity of these kinds of eateries. The first U.S. Fogo de Chao location opened in 1997 in Dallas, Texas. The company passed up cities like New York and Miami because it felt Texas was ideal. The state already had a strong barbecue culture after all. According to reporting by Eater, Ari Kosair, one of the co-founders of Fogo de Chao, explained the decision by stating, I saw a connection between the Brazilian gauchos and the Texas cowboys, so it seemed to be the best region to start. An experience at Fogo de Chao is a bit different from an American steakhouse, as it focuses on a culinary tradition known as churrasco. Churrasco is the process of barbecuing beef and other varieties of meat that are cooked over a fire on a long skewer. Instead of ordering one whole cut of meat, diners get to taste a little bit of everything. 
These different types of meat are sliced off of the skewer directly onto the plate, so restaurant goers know they're getting their food cooked fresh. At Fogo de Chao, guests get the opportunity to enjoy a prefix menu of these fire-roasted cuts of meat that are delivered to their table throughout the course of the meal. Because it's an all-you-can-eat experience, guests can sample a wide range of cuts and flavors, arguably offering a more exciting steakhouse experience than the American classic. Clearly, Fogo de Chao's specialty is meat, but that doesn't mean you're only stuck with heaping piles of beef on your plate. Guests shouldn't miss out on the salad bar either. This isn't just your average salad bar, though. At Fogo de Chao, it's known as the market table. This is where diners will find a variety of decidedly not basic salads, imported vegetables and cheeses, proteins like smoked salmon, and yes, even more meat. Of course, you can also grab some soup or a side salad if you want at least part of your meal to be on the lighter side. The Feijo Wada Bar is another can't-miss experience at this restaurant. Feijo Wada is Brazil's national dish, essentially a black bean stew, but it's also made with sausage. Feijo Wada is typically served with rice and farofa or baked yucca flour. It's eaten with orange slices on the side, as the citrus brings some zest and brightness to the dish. Fogo de Chao has an extensive wine list and knowledgeable servers to help diners decide what they might like best. But those who want more of an authentic Brazilian experience might want to try the signature cocktail at this restaurant, the Caipirinha. This is a classic sweet and sour cocktail that's an essential part of South American drinking culture. It's made with just a few ingredients, and the simpler, the better. Like a margarita, the drink starts off with lime and sugar. But instead of tequila, cachaça is the preferred spirit. Cachaça is a liquor similar to rum with a few slight differences in flavor. It tends to have a grassier taste. Up until 2013, it was often marketed and sold in the United States as Brazilian rum. Though restaurant goers will find this cocktail all around South America, it's not as common in the States, though it's getting more popular. Also, Caipirinha is the third most popular drink around the world, but definitely is the number one in Brazil. Sure, you may have had Mexican or Chinese food before, but unless you've actually been to the source, there's a good chance that you are not getting an authentic version of another culture's food, but a more Americanized version. Luckily, Fogo de Chao offers more of an authentic experience. Since the chain started off in Brazil, it had to stay true to its roots. Expanding into the U.S. market didn't make the company water down its product or experience either. It wanted to bring a true churrasco experience to the country, and it continues to do so successfully to this day. Guests can be confident that they're enjoying an authentic dining experience, and that's not exactly common in chain restaurants. Since Fogo de Chao is more of an upscale restaurant, guests can expect to drop some money at dinner, especially if they order drinks in addition to food. It's possible to get the same experience for less money, though. The main trick is to go at the right time. Dinner prices at Fogo de Chao are higher, but the restaurant is open for lunch too, and the prices are more reasonable during that time. The Gaucho lunch is available on the weekdays, and it gives guests access to the market table and Feijo Wada bar for just $15. While this offer doesn't include the unlimited meat selection, it only costs $8 to $10 more. Though these exact price points can differ by location, one thing is sure, lunch is the more affordable dining option for those who want to save on their next Fogo experience. Fogo de Chao may not seem like the most obvious restaurant to start a delivery wing of its business, especially since it does seem to rely so heavily on the in-person experience. But it really is possible to get a whole meal from Fogo delivered to your house. Customers can choose from churrasco combinations, which offers one type of meat and two side dishes. Feeding more than a few people? Fogo also offers deliveries of different meats by the pound, so you can stock up on your favorites or share with your whole party. This restaurant is about the experience, but sometimes guests want the flavor without having to leave the couch and get dressed up, and Fogo's delivery makes it easier for customers to get their Fogo fill whenever they have a craving for it. A new type of dining called Rodizio was growing in popularity in southern Brazil in the 70s. The organization of the restaurant is exactly what we expect from Fogo de Chao now. Servers coming around with grilled meat on skewers, giving a few slices to everyone in the room. Is that something that is traditional in Brazil? Yeah, that traditionally started in southern Brazil, mm -hmm. and now it's spread around the world. These eateries were originally frequented by truck drivers who would stop at the roadside restaurants. Since there were plenty of cattle around, the food was cheap and filling. In the beginning, these eateries were more like gas stations than restaurants. The meat was usually cooked outside in tin roofed rooms, and most didn't even have table seating at first. Drivers would often wait for their food, take it, and be on their way. 
However, as this type of cuisine became more popular, restaurants started adding tables so patrons could sit down to enjoy their meals. Fogo was the restaurant that took the idea to the next level, though. The founders wanted to bring Rodizio-style dining to the big cities, instead of sticking to the side of the road. They also added an upscale flair to the atmosphere, complete with real glasses and white tablecloths. Steakhouses in the U.S. generally have several different cuts of meat to choose from. Those who have made their rounds in the steakhouse scene will probably be able to identify the most familiar. But when Americans take a trip to Fogo de Chao, they may not know what they're getting into. Fogo offers a wide variety of cuts that you usually just don't see in the States. It's an adventurous eater's dream come true. The picanha is probably the most well-known and celebrated Brazilian cut of meat, which means it's a must-try item on the menu. Lamb may not be common in most American restaurants, but you can certainly find it here in the form of cordero. The costella, or beef short ribs, are also insanely popular. Once Fogo de Chao came to the United States, the restaurant exploded in popularity. But the company had bigger ideas than leaving it at that. The restaurant chain added a location in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia in August 2017. Larry Johnson, the chief executive officer of Fogo de Chao, spoke to the Saudi Gazette about the expansion, saying, Jeddah is such an exciting, dynamic city filled with unique restaurants from all over the world. We saw this as a great opportunity to become part of their growing culinary scene. We are thrilled to officially join the community and share our passion for Southern Brazilian cooking and hospitality with Saudi residents and visitors alike. Of course, the traditional cocktails found at other Fogo de Chao locations won't be available in Jeddah, but the company did create a mocktail menu specifically for this location, offering visitors here just as many options to explore the flavors of the cuisine. In addition to the Jeddah location, Fogo has also expanded into Dubai. The CARES Act was a $2 trillion aid package from the federal government to help alleviate economic suffering as a result of COVID-19 shutdowns, lockdowns, and loss of business and employment. A significant element of the CARES Act, the $349 billion Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, which purported to help out specifically small businesses, defined as those with 500 workers or less. However, franchises and outlets of huge companies could apply if a single location employed fewer than 500. Among the major restaurant chains that received a loan from the PPP fund was Fogo de Chao, accepting two separate $10 million windfalls. Company CEO Barry McGowan justified accepting money in this manner, telling the Wall Street Journal, The scale of our business doesn't matter. All of our restaurants count. Fogo de Chao pulled itself up out of potential pandemic disaster enough that in January 2021, it announced an aggressive and ambitious expansion plan. These new locations will be among the first to feature a revamped interior design, as well as the butchery, meat shops where customers can buy high-end cuts to prepare at home. Business did drop precipitously at Fogo de Chao during the coronavirus pandemic. According to Restaurant Business, same-store sales fell by 95% in the early weeks of the pandemic in spring 2020. When infection rates dropped and vaccination levels rose in the spring of 2021, restaurants cautiously started opening again, and Fogo de Chao performed spectacularly, with sales in March of that year up more than 17% above pre-pandemic levels. By June 2021, business at the steakhouse was 51% more than what it had been in June 2019. While the company experimented with pickup and delivery to stay afloat, the chain credited its financial revival to guests returning and became a publicly traded company in November 2021. It wasn't the first time investors could buy and sell stock in Fogo de Chao. According to Nation's Restaurant News, the eatery became a publicly traded firm in 2015 and remained so until it was purchased in 2018. Should you carbo load or just get lost in the sauce? Here's how to make the cut at your local Brazilian steakhouse. Make no mistake, a Brazilian steakhouse meal is a major undertaking, and like any big project, it works best with some planning. Reservations are recommended or required at most Brazilian steakhouses in the U.S. Since meals there are known to be leisurely affairs, tables don't turn over as quickly as at typical restaurants. And remember to eat lightly before your visit, you're going to want the space. To ensure you get to experience the best the restaurant has to offer, 
The website Mantripping also recommends researching the menu before you go. This not only gives you an idea of what to expect, but also alerts you to any specialty meat cuts or other special request items that you may not see being served when you get there. Brazilian steakhouses serve a different selection of cuts than North American steakhouses do, so even if you're a steakhouse veteran, you should do some research. You want every bite of food you eat during your visit to be the most delicious thing possible. When you arrive at a Brazilian steakhouse, your host or hostess will typically seat you, explain how things work, then invite you to serve yourself at the salad bar. If you've worked up an appetite and the smell of grilling meat is making you even hungrier, you may be tempted to load up. Since this salad bar experience is like nothing else, you'll find everything from marinated mushrooms to the classic Brazilian black bean stew feijoada, and even sushi, according to diners who have reported back from the experience. Tempting as this is, filling up on the salad bar is a rookie move. Uh, Clark, this is all you can eat. We only need one plate. After all, every bite of sushi means less room for what Brazilian steakhouses do best, tender meat grilled over an open fire. And since Brazilian steakhouse meals are a bit pricey, you'll get the most from your investment by focusing on specialties you can't get elsewhere and select side dishes you truly love. So look before you leap. The New York Daily News recommends walking around the whole serving area to see all the offerings before making your choices. Timing matters. First, to ensure a relaxing and enjoyable experience, be sure you've set aside enough time for a leisurely meal. Skilled eaters know that you'll enjoy your meal more if you eat slowly, take smaller portions, and give yourself permission to take breaks between bites. Diners posting on TripAdvisor recommend around two hours or more for a Brazilian steakhouse meal. Clear your schedule. And the time you choose to dine matters too. Your skilled servers need some time to warm up and get into peak performance mode each day, so you may not experience them at their best if you're the first table through the door. And the busier the restaurant gets, the faster fresh skewers come out, so you may get fresher meat during peak dining hours. Finally, the busy hours are the time when a greater variety of meats will be in circulation. So don't rush to get the first reservation of the evening, but don't go too late either, or the good stuff you've been looking forward to may have already run out. At standard steakhouses, rich, starchy sides are part of the attraction. Who doesn't love fluffy mashed potatoes or a creamy mac and cheese? Brazilian steakhouses are no exception, but they offer an even wider assortment of carb-heavy side dishes than normal. Besides the usual, you'll often get Brazilian specialties, including fried bananas and pau de queijo a type of cheesy pastry puff. And because Brazilian steakhouses are all-you-can-eat affairs, you can have as much as you like. But beware, this is both a blessing and a curse. It's way too easy to fill yourself up on cheesy, starchy delights if you're hungry, even before the first skewer of meat gets to your table. And that would be a serious mistake. You're not paying the big bucks to feast on potatoes and bananas. So choose your side strategically. It's suggested that these make up no more than 20% of your meal. They're an accompaniment to the main event, not your whole meal. The dizzying number of options and bustle of activity in a Brazilian steakhouse can be overwhelming, and you may feel rushed to grab a serving of everything at once. Don't. Remember, your Brazilian steakhouse experience is supposed to be a leisurely meal, not an eating contest. You shouldn't feel any pressure to accept every bit of meat that comes your way. It's perfectly acceptable to politely decline anything that doesn't interest you. And if you see something that looks good, but your plate is already full, give it a pass. Enjoy the food in front of you before loading up again. And don't worry, a fresh batch of that tempting morsel will be there for you when you're ready for seconds. If you don't see it walk by again, you can always ask. For some steak connoisseurs, sauces may seem like an unnecessary part of a steakhouse meal. After all, one goes to a steakhouse to enjoy the flavor of meat, not cover it up. But if you go to a Brazilian steakhouse, it's a different story. Their sauces are an authentic and refreshing part of the experience. If you find the standard butter-based sauces of most U.S. steakhouses too rich and stodgy, the light, tangy, uncooked vegetable-based sauces in Brazilian steakhouses may be a revelation. One of these is Molo Campania. 
a vibrant vinaigrette flavored with chopped tomatoes, onions, and green peppers. Another popular accompaniment is chimichurri, a fresh green sauce with parsley, cilantro, garlic, and citrus or vinegar. Both are intended to not only enhance the flavor of meat, but serve as an invigorating foil to it. The acid in these sauces helps cut through the richness of all the beef fat and salt you'll be consuming, and they also help ensure your palate will be refreshed for your next serving. An intimidating factor, if you're new to Brazilian steakhouses, is the meat menu. Besides standard favorites such as filet mignon and ribeye, along with non-beef options including chicken, pork, and lamb, you'll almost certainly see some less familiar cuts with Portuguese names. If you don't know what these are or how they're pronounced, you may be tempted to skip them altogether. Don't be intimidated. If you skip them, you'll be missing out on some of what makes a Brazilian steakhouse meal truly distinctive. Taste Atlas suggests the picanha or rump cap, a lean cut topped with a layer of fat that keeps the meat juicy. Other popular cuts are fraldinha or long strips of flank steak, and alcatra, a large fat-capped cut of top sirloin. Another popular cut unique to Brazilian steakhouses is cupim, which comes from the hump of Brazilian zebu cattle. This richly marbled cut is not often served in the U.S., but should you visit a steakhouse in Brazil, it's well worth seeking out. Brazilian cowboys, massive knives, and unlimited gluttony. We must be talking about a Brazilian steakhouse, Texas de Brazil to be exact. Enjoy all you can eat, but don't expect a doggy bag. Prepare to gorge yourself in savory meats. Obviously, when you think of a Brazilian steakhouse like Texas de Brazil, you might assume that it was founded by someone from either Texas or Brazil. But in actuality, the founder of the chain restaurant, Salim Azrawi, immigrated to the United States from Lebanon, and his story is pretty inspiring. According to D Magazine, Azrawi came to the United States in 1981 along with one million others as war raged on in his home country of Lebanon. The war lasted from 1975 to 1990, and as he told D Magazine, quote, war became part of my life. So how does the chain manage to feature such delicious, authentic Brazilian cuisine? In 1997, Azrawi and his business partner visited Brazil and ate at the restaurant of chef Evandro Carignato. They were obviously impressed with his skills, and the fact that he was an actual gaucho was also appealing. Because of that, the three worked together to open Texas de Brazil in the Dallas area with one founding principle. They wouldn't change the traditional preparation and serving of the churrasco dinner. But what exactly does that mean? If you've never eaten at a Brazilian steakhouse, then you might be a little confused as to what makes it so different from other steakhouses. And honestly, the answer is everything. Eating at a Brazilian steakhouse allows you to experience a true Brazilian dinner, something Texas Day Brazil is definitely proud of. Specifically, Texas Day Brazil was inspired by a tradition from southern Brazil called churrasco, in which local cowboys would cook large meals with slow roasted meats cooked over the fire, and a large array of seasonal vegetables as well as regional specialties. The meats were the main star of the show though, and today are brought to the table to be hand-carved in front of diners. And that's basically what happens when you dine in at a Texas Day Brazil. You are served a large array of meats right at your table, as well as a large salad bar with seemingly endless toppings. It truly is an authentic Brazilian steakhouse experience. After years of hard work, planning, and a strong desire to create an authentic Brazilian experience in Texas, Azrawi and Carignato opened the first location of Texas Day Brazil in 1998 in Addison, Texas. As Azrawi told D Magazine, it wasn't an easy process, but it was worth it. If you put in the time and effort, you will succeed one way or another. It required me to dig as deep as I've ever dug. Opening a new restaurant is never an easy endeavor, but from their first location onward, Azrawi never gave up. And with such an original concept and great team behind his back, it's no wonder it became such a success. Eating at Texas Day Brazil is an experience unlike anything you've ever had before. First, the dine-in menu isn't your typical menu where you decide on a single entree. Texas Day Brazil has a fixed price menu that gives you access to a ton of food. 
Then you'll get your fill of the huge salad bar that's a step above your typical salad bar. At Texas Day Brazil, there are fresh vegetables, charcuterie items, and even smoked salmon and homemade lobster bisque. You can go back to the salad bar as many times as you want, too, so don't stress if you aren't able to try everything at once. And you'll also be greeted by gauchos, serving a variety of tableside meats. The gauchos walk around the restaurant with different meats for you to choose from, so try not to fill up on the salad bar as hard as that might be. Typically, when the economy struggles, so do restaurants. People stop eating out as much, so it makes sense that restaurants would suffer the consequences. But for Texas Day Brazil, a bad economy can't stop them from expanding and opening even more locations. According to Nation's Restaurant News, while many chain establishments struggled in 2013 and the years prior, Texas Day Brazil wasn't one of them. Their director of operations told the publication that the success of Texas Day Brazil was due in large part to the chain being strategic and smart in how they expanded. In this economy, there are a lot of good deals to be had. People are willing to negotiate and provide better terms for businesses. At the same time, a lot of restaurants are folding, and there are spaces available. It's all a matter of taking advantage of the good deals. In 2020, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, Texas de Brazil responded by offering more to-go options and taking reservations to keep indoor dining safe and responsible. That said, the chain has had to close at least one location because of the pandemic. But it seems other locations have remained open, which is pretty impressive. A struggling economy can't stop Texas Day Brazil. If you're looking for an economically friendly meal, then Texas Day Brazil probably isn't for you. Yes, it's a lot of food, but since your dine-in options are mostly eating from the price-fixed menu, you'll be paying a premium price for all that food. Specifically, depending on the location of the restaurant, one meal will cost anywhere from $42.99 to $48.99. So while Texas Day Brazil is certainly a unique dining experience, it's also by no means a cheap night out. And because of that, you won't find a Texas Day Brazil in just any neighborhood. Malcolm Knapp, president of a restaurant consulting firm, told Nation's Restaurant News, quote, Texas Day Brazil is an upscale brand, so it can't go everywhere. It needs the right location. Because Texas Day Brazil is an upscale dining experience, there's no real kids' menu. So it's understandable that you might assume it's not really a kid-friendly restaurant. But there is a perk to bringing your kids as you don't have to pay full price for them. Specifically, as long as you have one full-priced adult meal, your kids can get a pretty great discount on their own Brazilian steakhouse experience. If your child is two or younger, they can eat for free, while children up to five years old are only $5 for the authentic Brazilian meal. And kids up to 12 are half off your regular full-price dinner cost. So don't be afraid to bring your kids along to Texas Day Brazil, as they won't cost a ton and they'll definitely get full and have plenty to choose from. Another huge thing that sets Texas Day Brazil apart from other restaurant chains is that you don't get to take any food home with you. It's the policy at Texas Day Brazil to not allow customers to take home to-go bags after dining in. According to the chain's website, they believe that restaurant goers pretty much already get their fair share of food while in the restaurant, saying, Our continuous dining concept does not allow for to-go containers or bags for uneaten portions of food from the salad area, meats, and specialty or side items. But if you find yourself hungry for dessert, you can order that separately and take those home. It makes sense that Texas Day Brazil wouldn't allow leftovers, as the chain is basically an upscale all-you-can-eat buffet. So don't be surprised when you don't get a to-go box at the end of your meal. While Texas Day Brazil might be pretty stringent about taking home leftovers after a delicious meal, there is one way you can enjoy traditional Brazilian churrasco at home, ordering Texas Day Brazil to go. Yes, it won't be the same as getting to eat at the actual restaurant, but it's a pretty great deal if you want to stay home in your sweatpants and even save some cash. As it turns out, Texas Day Brazil's to-go family packs are a pretty good deal. As of November 2020, the meal comes with two different types of meat, enough for four people for $69. The meal also comes with three sides that are super tasty too. A green salad, fried plantains, and potatoes au gratin. 
According to a review in the OC Register, the takeout from Texas Day Brazil is solid because the meats are sliced nicely and hold their flavor even after delivery. Considering the cost of Texas Day Brazil, it might not exactly be the kind of place you just randomly decide to go to on a Tuesday night. But for the frugal-minded who still hunger for a unique dining experience, we have a life hack for you. The bar menu is cheaper. From the bar menu, you can actually order quite a lot of food. There's lobster bisque, an antipasto platter, chicken breast, garlic sirloin, sausage, and even filet with bacon. It's not an endless array of roasted meats like you get in the restaurant proper, but you can certainly get a full meal just at the bar at Texas Day Brazil. So if you aren't super hungry, don't care for the salad bar, or just want to save some money, then it might be a smart idea to order from the bar menu so you can pick and choose what you want and pay less. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys! <laughs> Texas Day Brazil isn't just a full-on Brazilian churrasco experience. It's also an interactive restaurant where you really get to be pretty hands-on with your meal. Obviously, you get to plate your own salad from the salad bar and pick and choose what you want to eat, but that's not all. When you decide you're ready for meat to be brought to your table, you'll flip over a disc on your table from red to green to indicate you're waiting for the parade of meats to be brought to you. Then, when the gauchos bring the meat, you'll actually use your own tongs to grab the meat as they slice it and place it on your plate. Basically, when you eat at Texas Day Brazil, expect to do a little work yourself, though it's all pretty fun and entertaining. Again, this is an authentic experience, so definitely enjoy it and remember that it's not every day you get to grab meat being served to you tableside. There's one restaurant chain out there who claims to have the meats, and surprisingly, it's not Texas Day Brazil. Arby's, we have the meats. But there's meat, and then there's Texas Day Brazil meat. So just how many meats exactly can you expect to eat at Texas Day Brazil, and what are they? Well, it's important to note that not everything will be available at every Texas Day Brazil. But for the most part, here's what cuts of meat you can expect. Pork loin, Brazilian sausage, leg of lamb, bacon-wrapped chicken breast, lamb chops, bacon-wrapped filet mignon, braised beef ribs, barbecued pork ribs, parmesan drumettes, flank steak, and more. If you don't see the meat you want to eat being served, you can definitely ask when it will be available and they'll do their best to get it to you. Sorry, Arby's. Someone took your meat. Between all that meat and the salad bar, you're probably thinking you'd be pretty full. But there's more. Texas Day Brazil also serves tableside Brazilian cheese bread and garlic mashed potatoes. So if you head in anytime soon, be sure to bring your appetite. Clearly, Texas Day Brazil knows a thing or two about running a successful business. The chain restaurant has survived over 20 years in the industry and has continued to expand and open up new locations all over, despite so many other restaurants shutting down or stopping their expansion. But even though Texas Day Brazil brings in a lot of money, they're also very charitable. For instance, in August 2021, Texas Day Brazil announced that they had raised $33,000 for the American Red Cross to help members of the military and their families deal with all the challenges that come with military service. As Rawi said, we proudly support the American Red Cross program serving our military veterans and families and feel fortunate to have the ability to craft a campaign that provides our guests with an opportunity to raise funds that go directly to those who protect our freedoms. Texas A Brazil is also involved in other charities like St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and the Freedom Alliance. For every $5 that you donate, you're going to get $5 to use on the restaurant when you come back. Clearly, giving back is just as important to them as providing succulent meat. If you're going to a Brazilian steakhouse, you want the best experience possible, right? It pays to be choosy with your churrasco. Keep watching to learn about some Brazilian steakhouse chains that won't steer you wrong. Texas de Brazil is a Brazilian steakhouse heavyweight with over 50 locations spread across the United States and several more around the globe. As its name suggests, it aspires to bridge traditional churrasco with the spirit and hospitality of the Lone Star State. All you can eat is the way to go here, although desserts and drinks cost extra. The charcoal grilled meat selection covers multiple land dwellers with a few high-end cuts, such as filet mignon and lamb chops. You can even choose amongst three picks of picanha. 
standard, garlic rubbed or a lamb version. The salad bar also impresses with several hot and cold options. The items that are particularly worthy of your attention include the potato salad, tabbouleh and a variety of cheese dishes that include grilled provolone and mozzarella balls. If you don't have a huge appetite when you're at Texas de Brazil, you can always order a la carte at the bar. And if you'd rather enjoy your food outside, the restaurant has also done an excellent job transitioning to takeout during the COVID pandemic with solo and family style plates, as well as a la carte meats available by the pound. There's nothing like eating here at Texas de Brazil. You'll be in good hands at Fogo de Chao, which has dozens of locations coast to coast and some international locations as far as the Middle East. Since arriving in the US in 1997, this chain has firmly established itself as a well-oiled meat grilling and slicing machine. There's a card before you on the table to send a signal to the waiters. The red side means that you need a bit of a break, while the green side is a green light to keep the meats coming. I turn this over to green, and look who shows up. This guy with the meat. Yeah, Wait. that's correct. If you happen to prefer surf to turf, Fogo de Chao recently expanded its seafood menu. It includes upscale fare such as Chilean sea bass and a chilled seafood tower that's highlighted by a staggering selection of lobster tails, lobster claws, jumbo shrimp, a crab cluster, crab claws and green-lipped mussels. And if you want something green to offset the seafood and land-based meats, you better not neglect the salad bar, known here as the market table. It offers a wide range of charcuterie, antipasti, and seasonal specialties such as smoked salmon, candied bacon, and feijoada, a traditional Brazilian black bean stew. A New York City legend, Churrascaria Plataforma has been bringing the fire to the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood since 1996. If you're seriously hungry, you can go for the all-you-can-eat option while keeping an eye out in particular for the lamb. If meat isn't all you're looking for, this humongous restaurant also boasts salad and feijoada bars. Considering Churrascaria Plataforma's location and top quality meats, the price tag is noticeably higher than the other places on this list. Generally speaking, your bill will come out to about $69 for the full spread, but it's worth the price of admission to grab a seat in the massive dining room and indulge a little. And if you're willing to forego some of the flashier meats such as ribeye, filet mignon and lamb chops, then you can certainly stop by during lunch. That's when the whole shebang is reduced to $42, and you can still get your fill on picanha, pork loin and that killer leg of lamb, not to mention the gourmet salad bar and extensive side selection. Massachusetts is home to a sizable Brazilian population, so it's no surprise that you can find Stella Churrasco in Boston. Alma Gaúcha, which translates to the soul of the cowboy, is among the best churrascarias in the city. A recent addition to the trendy seaport district, it traffics exclusively in USDA prime meats that are aged up to 45 days, and you can definitely taste the quality. Choose from picanha, ribeye, filet mignon, and New Zealand lamb leg, marinated with lemon and fresh mint. If you're avoiding red meat, Alma Gaúcha has you covered. You can choose from pork ribs, traditional parmesan pork, and slow-cooked chicken marinated overnight in beer and cognac. There's also a seafood option, with some open fire-grilled salmon that's served with a tangy passion fruit sauce. The salad bar and side dishes are also deserving of plenty of raves, with a honey-drizzled grilled cheese among the popular picks. You can even order a cup of chunky clam chowder. This is Boston, after all. Enophiles are sure to appreciate the extensive wine list at Alma Gaúcha, which is over 150 bottles deep and highlights several South American varietals, naturally enough. Before all the rest, there was Rodijo Grill, which became the first Brazilian steakhouse to land in the US when it opened in Littleton, Colorado in 1996. Now, with over 20 locations across 12 states, the chain is still going strong, dazzling diners with its signature grilled pineapple and rotisserie grilled meats that are carved tableside. The menu includes standards such as picanha and chicken wrapped in bacon, plus a few interesting additions including a center-cut steak topped with Parmesan cheese. For the more adventurous eater, there's the popular Brazilian appetizer, Coração de Frango Temporado, which is grilled chicken hearts, if your Portuguese is a bit rusty, like mine. While Rodijo Grill may lag a bit in the quality department compared to some of its peers, the full Rodijo is fairly affordable, as it's priced at less than $35. This includes unlimited Brazilian sides and all the rotisserie grilled meats you can manage to stuff down your gullet. Considering the prices of some of the other spots on this list, that's a relative bargain. 
And if you're a regular or plan to be one, sign up for Club Rodigio to receive restaurant promotions and offers including a special gift for your birthday. Have you ever been to Rodizio Grill or have you been here lately? If not, maybe it's time for you to come. If you're going to open a steakhouse in traditional bastions of beef like Chicago, Houston and San Antonio, then you better bring the goods. Chama Gaucha definitely delivers on that front, serving up a dozen meat options including multiple cuts of steak. But the beef ribs are where it's really at here. That came from a big cow, I was like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Beyond the cow, the meat feast is rounded out with chicken, pork and lamb. The salad bar also impresses diners who need yet more sustenance, as it features more than 30 items. The wine selection is also a winner, as the bottles are stored in a temperature-controlled cellar and include several award-winning labels. It may seem like an impossible task after all of that grub, but try to budget some stomach real estate for dessert. The slate includes Latin favorites such as tres leches and flan, as well as the classic Brazilian papaya cream, a tropical ice cream and fruit combo topped with creme de cassis, blackberry liqueur, but the real showstopper is the fireball cheesecake, which is set aflame tableside and caramelized thanks to a liberal dowsing of Spanish favorite liqueur 43. The San Antonio Current recommends heading here for special occasions when you've got plenty of room. And plenty of others agree that this is destination dining, as Chamagaucha's San Antonio location took the 24th spot on Yelp's 2019 list of the top 100 places to treat yourself. The wait is definitely worth it for the churrasco served at Pampas Grill, which is located at the iconic Original Farmers Market in Los Angeles. You'll find tourists and locals alike lining up to get their fill of assorted Brazilian specialties at this popular stall. Your first order of business will be loading up at the Serve Yourself Salad Bar, which features an array of veggies and sides. It also features a few hearty mains including beef stew, chicken stroganoff and the classic feijoada, which is only available during the weekend. The next stop is the grill station, where your server will cut off slices of the meat of your choice. Be sure to make the tender garlic beef a priority, but the picanha, the chicken wrapped with bacon and the leg of lamb are also winners. Finally, you'll reach the cash register and perform a weigh-in for your plate to determine the final cost of your meal. If you're opting for the full spread, take note that everything, from steak to hard-boiled eggs, is priced the same by the pound. In other words, to get the best bang for your buck, make sure to make the meats your priority over the salad bar items. According to Eater, the quick service spot is an especially good pick for budget-conscious diners. Or if you happen to prefer a full restaurant experience, Pampas Grill also operates a brick-and-mortar location in Culver City, California. Miami has its fair share of Latin American dining destinations, and Steak Brazil Churrascoria is definitely up there with the best of them especially if you've got a hankering for some delicious meats. Eater notes that this is a popular downtown spot with exceptionally good prices, especially compared to some other Miami restaurants. It's also got a highly extensive menu of meats, cheese and sides. The dining room may not be as large as some of its competitors, and we must note that the selection is relatively limited with a mere nine meat options. But let's face it, that is still plenty to choose from. You can select among tasty prime sirloin, picanha, pork loin, leg of lamb, beef ribs, chicken hearts and drumsticks, sausage and tender flap meat. If for some reason that's not enough food to satiate your cravings, the salad bar is pretty ample. What's more, all of the non-barbecued hot dishes are freshly cooked and brought directly to your table. Steak Brazil is ideal for group gatherings as well, so be sure to consider it for your next party or special occasion. Chima Steakhouse is yet another Brazilian-based chain that has made its way stateside, and to that we say, the more the merrier. The first US location opened in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in 2004, and there are now three additional outlets located in Philadelphia, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Shima is a reference to Shimahau, a traditional Brazilian drink that represents the sort of camaraderie and community-mindedness the restaurant hopes to foster. Speaking of tradition, the picanha served here is top quality Angus Prime, and for added firepower, you can order it with house-made chimichurri sauce and grilled jalapenos. Steak lovers will surely appreciate the wide assortment of cuts, which include baby top sirloin, ribeye, New York steak and filet mignon. All of those are available plain, or for those wanting a bit of a luxurious edge, they can also come wrapped in bacon. You can even indulge in paper-thin slices of beef carpaccio at the salad bar. 
all four Shima Steakhouse locations received the 2021 Award of Excellence from Wine Spectator, which made sure to note that California varietals are the house specialty. We hope you have room for one more churrascaria, because SP Brazilian Steakhouse might just be the best spot on this list. If you happen to be anywhere in the vicinity of the Austin suburb of Lakeway, Texas, a stop here is simply a must. To put it bluntly, the reviews don't lie. Consider the fact that SP Brazilian Steakhouse comes with nearly perfect marks on Google, a perfect 5-star rating on TripAdvisor, and another 5 out of 5 rating from Yelp, which ranked the restaurant at number 17 on its list of America's top 100 places to eat in 2020. How can you argue with all that? As one Yelp reviewer summed up the hype, you can tell this is not just another chain, but the real deal. If you have ever wanted to feel like you are a judge on Top Chef with people bringing you the finest of all the dishes to taste until you are completely stuffed, this is the restaurant for you. You should prioritize the prime cut meats, but be sure to also leave some room for homemade pau de queijo, the famed pillowy Brazilian cheese bread. And do try your very best to leave just a bit more room for an order of creamy flan and creme brulee, both of which are also prepared in-house. Ooh, flan. Brazilian steakhouses are known for their wide variety of mouth-watering meats. But what if you're not sure which one you're eating? Should you waste your appetite on chicken or go all in on red meat? We're breaking down the most popular Brazilian steakhouse cuts for you. I'm telling you, this is where Brazilians come to eat. I gotta say, Annie's really good at this. She always drags me to the weirdest places, and the food is always incredible. And plus, you get a lot for your money, too, so that's good. <laughs> Let's start with picanha, the most typical cut of meat at a Brazilian steakhouse, and a must-have for anyone experiencing a churrascaria for the first time. Picanha is a crescent-shaped cut of meat with the fat cap attached that, when skewered, looks a little like a half medallion. It comes from an animal's hindquarters and is also called the rump cap, rump cover, sirloin cap, or occasionally culotte. Because it has a fat cap that melts as it cooks, picanha is a tender, juicy cut of meat perfect for slow roasting and often prepared with just a hint of salt. You can find beef, pork, or even lamb picanha, depending on the restaurant, but all are solid choices if you want the authentic churrascaria experience. While you might be hard-pressed to find picanha outside of a Brazilian steakhouse in the United States, the cut is incredibly popular in Brazil and often found at Kilo restaurants, a frequent option for lunch similar to the all-you-can-eat buffet, except that you pay by the weight of your plate. BBC Close-Up visited a Kilo restaurant in Sao Paulo and put together a classic plate of grilled picanha steak that weighed in at about 5 kilos and cost about $3.50. Now that's a lunch we can get behind. Fralginha is another cut of meat you're likely to find at a Brazilian steakhouse. Similar to flank steak, it's served in long, flat pieces with a pink middle and grilled crust. It's cut against the grain to make it as tender and delicious as possible. As recommended by Taste Atlas, it's often served with a sharp, vinegary salsa. As explained by The Spruce Eats, sirloin is typically divided into two cuts, bottom sirloin and top sirloin. Fralginha is a bottom sirloin. Both are a bit tougher than some other cuts of meat because they come from a more muscular area, making them well-suited to the slow-roasting process of Brazilian churrasco. According to Churrasco Shop, Fralginha was introduced in Brazil by a butcher and restaurateur named Marcos Bassi in 1967. Bassi had a French customer who always requested this cut of meat, then essentially unknown in Brazil. And over time, he started to tweak the cut and serve it on a sandwich in sliced grilled pieces. It was obviously a success, and today, Fralginha is a churrasco staple throughout the country. Alcatra is the top sirloin to Fralginha's bottom sirloin, the yin to its yang. It's one of the largest skewered cuts served as part of churrasco and is prized for its succulent, hearty beef flavor. Long and lean, this beef cut is seasoned with salt and grilled with a layer of fat that melts away and leaves the remainder crispy and delicious. It's another one you don't want to miss. Top sirloin makes for great steaks and is a good choice if you're looking for something that's marbled and flavorful while being a bit more on the lean side. It's also very versatile and a good option for making at home, especially if you're shopping on a budget. If you see chuleta on the menu, you're in for some whole ribeye steaks skewered and grilled. 
Like their name suggests, ribeye steaks come from the rib section of a cow. Butchers can prepare them to be bone-in or boneless, and the meat is marbled with a good amount of intramuscular fat that gives the meat its flavor and moisture. Speaking of that marbling, we happen to think it makes the ribeye the best cut of steak ever. That's why it's no surprise to us that Kobe, a type of Wagyu beef from Tajima cattle raised in Hyogo, Japan, and one of the most prized types of beef in the world, is a ribeye steak. It's actually pretty rare to find real Kobe, but if you're lucky, you might just find Wagyu on the menu of your local Brazilian steakhouse for an extra, elevated experience. This one doesn't need much explanation. While filet mignon is a classic on Brazilian steakhouse menus, pacing yourself enough to fully enjoy your experience is all about priorities. And if we're making a list, we'd actually recommend one of the other cuts to get the most out of your appetite. Why? Favored though it is for its buttery texture, and rightfully so, filet mignon isn't as unique to a Brazilian steakhouse as some of these other meats. Still, we don't blame you if you can't resist especially if the filet mignon comes to your table wrapped in bacon, which at a Brazilian steakhouse, it often does. This is where the benefits of that rodizio-style dining come in again. You can try as much or as little of everything as you like. Also known as tenderloin steak, filet mignon is lean, tender, and sold boneless. It comes from the area below the backbone, the same area as strip steak, T-bones, and porterhouse steaks, all of which are well-suited to the grill. As reported by CNN Travel, its tenderness and lack of fat make it a favorite among Brazilian churrascarias, and it can be delicious when prepared in signature churrasco style. Thank you all for being here. Let's get started. Wow, great attitude, Ron. Sorry, I was talking to these ribs. Costella translates to ribs, and at a Brazilian steakhouse, you'll see slabs of ribs that look too good to be true. As impressive to look at as they are delicious to eat, pork or beef churrasco ribs are a must, if you aren't afraid to get a little messy. James Hills, author of the food and travel blog Man Tripping, told MASH that the perfectly caramelized edges of churrasco ribs give the meat a hint of sweetness. The benefit to serving them rodizio style is that it gives you a chance to try them, without filling yourself up. He explained, at a regular steakhouse, by the time you get through a beef rib, it's a lot of fat and heaviness. But just a piece of it? It's perfect. While we're willing to bet the best Brazilian steakhouses aren't making any of the most common mistakes people make when cooking ribs, the rest of us might want to check out some foolproof ways to serve up mouth-watering ribs at home, too. Often confused with chorizo, but with a milder flavor, linguiça is a type of Portuguese sausage commonly served in a Brazilian steakhouse. On the Gas notes that while linguiça translates literally to tongue, this sausage isn't made of tongues at all. It's made from ground pork and spices, and the name is simply a reference to its tongue-like shape. Linguiça gets its flavor from spices like garlic, paprika, oregano, and cumin, paired with a vinegar brine and smoke curing. The salt and vinegar brine helps mellow out the meaty flavor of the sausage, and it's smoked to make it even more flavorful and tender. Delighted Cooking notes that linguiça is typically made with pork butt, a cut that, oddly enough, actually comes from the shoulder area. This cut is higher in connective tissue, so turning it into ground pork or sausages or using longer cooking methods is typically best. While beef gets much of the spotlight at a Brazilian steakhouse, the lombo isn't something to miss either. The Portuguese word lombo translates literally to loin, and on a churrasco menu, most often refers to pork loin served with a crust or sprinkling of parmesan that lends a smoky, savory flavor. A Taste of Home notes that pork loin, not to be confused with pork tenderloin, is a cut from between the spine and ribs. It's often trimmed in a way that leaves a fat cap on the top of the cut, similar to bicanha, to help the pork stay moist while it roasts. Pork tenderloin, on the other hand, is from above the spine, and is more tender because it contains less muscle. Nevertheless, pork loin is better suited to churrasco because it has that fat cap to keep it juicy, while pork tenderloin is more prone to drying out. Though if you're making it at home, marinade helps. Cordeiro means lamb, and you'll find it at many Brazilian steakhouses in the form of bone-in steaks and chops cut from a rack. 
As noted by Very Well Fit, lamb is a fairly lean protein with 10 grams of fat per serving. According to Kitchen, it has a stronger, more gamey flavor than beef, pork, or chicken, a direct result of the time an animal spends grazing at pasture, and stands up well to bold spices and char from the grill. If you try lamb next time you're at a Brazilian steakhouse and want to recreate part of the experience at home, it's easier than you might think to make an almost as impressive rack yourself. Recipes all over the internet share secrets on how to get the Cordeiro taste at home. But nothing beats the skewer-to-table feel at a traditional Brazilian steakhouse. Frango is Portuguese for chicken, and many Brazilian steakhouses have some version of it on the menu. Options range from bacon-wrapped chicken breasts to sweet and sour marinated drumsticks, all served on skewers, of course. Tasty options, yes, but we wholeheartedly support the steak when you're at a Brazilian steakhouse. As Man Tripping's James Hill put it to Mashed, I never get the chicken. Chicken is not what I'm going to spend my appetite budget on. That said, there are some chicken options very authentic to the churrasco experience. Take Coraçao de Franjo, for example. You won't find it on every Brazilian steakhouse menu, but if you do, you'll see chicken hearts grilled in classic churrasco style among the skewers brought to your table. According to food blogger Brazilian Kitchen Abroad, Curaçao de Franjo is a classic appetizer of the authentic churrasco experience and tastes similar to dark meat chicken, just a little chewier and sweeter with a bit of a metallic tang. Last but certainly not least, we have cupim. This isn't a cut you're very likely to see in the United States. The cattle site says that cupim comes from a special breed of cow called the Brazilian zebu that, unlike the cows we're most used to seeing here, have a hump between their shoulder blades, much like a camel. That hump is where cupim comes from. Tender, rich, and marbled, Taste Atlas explains that cupim has no blood or juice and, when eaten, is described as rich and fatty, with a bit of a stringy texture. So, if you do come across this unique cut of meat, we definitely recommend giving it a try. Where did that name come from? What's with the server's uniforms? And how can you get an exclusive cocktail designed by a world-class mixer? Keep watching for everything you didn't know about Shima Brazilian Steakhouse. Funded by the Silva family in southern Brazil, the first U.S. Shima Steakhouse outlet opened in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in 2003. Since then, three other Shima Steakhouses have opened across the country. Known for its friendly service and stylish settings, the chain specializes in Brazilian Rodigio service where an assortment of dishes, usually churrasco or Brazilian barbecue, are delivered directly to the tables on oversized skewers. The meat is then sliced directly onto the plates. When Bruno Silva first opened Shima Steakhouse, he wanted to offer diners more than just food. He wanted to give them the experience of Brazil's gastronomic culture. Building on tradition, Shima's food is served Rodigio style by waiters dressed as gauchos, or Brazilian cowboys, known for their hospitable nature and ability to eat copious amounts of beef. In fact, gauchos spit-roasted their meat over fire in the 1800s before sharing it among family and friends. Today, the gaucho style of dining is a huge part of Brazil's and Shima's culinary experience. Sporting white or black shirts and orange neckties, Shima's waitstaff do the rounds of the dining room, offering diners numerous opportunities to sample over 15 different churrasco or Brazilian barbecue dishes. When Shima's guests are ready for a gaucho to approach their table, they flip a special disc from black to orange and request how they want their meat prepared. The gaucho then slices the piping hot meat right off the skewer. Once the guests have enough meat on their plates, they flip the disc back to black. No, 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 I can't, I can't, I gotta save room for dessert, I can't do it. While the undisputed star of the Shima Steakhouse cocktail menu is the Caipirinha, the chain is named after an entirely different kind of beverage. Hailing from Brazil's Rio Grande do Sul, Shimahau is a caffeinated drink made from the leaves and stems of the yerba mate plant. The intensely green drink features a creamy texture and an earthy, grassy flavor. Since in Brazil, Shimahau is often drunk as a part of social rituals, its incorporation in Shima's name represents the steakhouse's culture of camaraderie and hospitality. Historically, the beverage was used as a means of building bonds between family and friends who gathered in a circle while the host prepared and drank the first serving with a straw called bamba or bambia. The drink would then be refilled and passed to each person at the gathering. 
The breadth of Shima's corporate chef Adelaide Engler's experience is truly incredible. In fact, it seems like there's very little she hasn't done. The multi-talented Brazilian chef, who joined Shima in 2020, is also a food journalist, author, culinary critic, and radio and television host. Engler has hosted the Brazil Sensational TV series for Discovery World and a number of cooking shows for Fox International. Before becoming enamored with gastronomy, Engler studied economics in Brazil and worked as an investment advisor in New York City. Fluent in six languages, she has trained and worked at some of the world's top restaurants, including Cipriani Coca Cabana Palace in Brazil and El Celler de Conroca in Spain. Although the main appeal of Ashura Scaria is meat, Shima Steakhouse also has plenty to offer vegetarians. Vegetarian diners can simply opt for the sumptuous buffet-style gourmet salad bar without paying for the rodigio, which includes both meat and the salad buffet. With an overwhelming choice of Brazilian and American vegetarian dishes, Shima's salad bar can satisfy some serious hunger. From classic greens like Waldorf salad, Caesar salad, and arugula salad, to more unusual offerings such as black quinoa salad and kale sweet potato salad, the buffet offers something for all tastes. I think it's time for you to start to seriously consider salads. For those wishing to create their own culinary masterpieces, Shima features a variety of vegetables and sauces. Furthermore, it's not just vegetarians who are impressed. Many carnivores have praised Shima's salad bar for its extensive parade of offerings, albeit pointing out that one should save room for the restaurant's main attraction. While steakhouses lend themselves well to gluten-free diets since they serve a lot of meat, Shima takes particular care when it comes to highlighting its gluten-free options. And it has many, so many in fact, that the restaurant has a special gluten-free menu. From appetizers such as cheese bread and turkey spread to dozens of items from the salad bar, Shima delivers an overwhelming range of gluten-free fare. To top things off, there are also gluten-free dressings, sauces, and desserts. Shima's extremely transparent menu, which also highlights items that contain dairy and nuts, has received overwhelmingly positive reviews from diners. One reviewer on Find Me Gluten Free wrote, We made an online reservation and put a note that I cannot eat gluten. Upon arriving, they asked if we'd like a printout of the allergy information, so I was aware of the items on the salad bar that are gluten free. Back in 2017, Shima partnered up with the owner of one of Philadelphia's most popular bars, the Hop Sing Laundromat, to bring its guests three delicious cocktails. Since the stylish speakeasy is known for its strict door policy, many rejoiced at the opportunity to sample its meticulously crafted cocktails without having to dress to the nines. The mastermind behind the venue's delicious cocktails is its owner, who has been quick to highlight his appreciation for Shima's Steakhouse's meaty offerings. The main component of the three cocktails was cachaça, the popular tipple of Brazil made from fermented sugarcane, the appropriately named gaucho blended cachaça, lemon juice, crushed blackberries, soda, and simple syrup. The gaucha contained the same ingredients but replaced crushed blackberries with raspberries, 